guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing this bridal makeup look for you. It features very, very soft, lovely pinks and mauves on the eyes and the cheeks and the lips. It's very girly, spring kind of inspired um, wedding appropriate makeup tutorial. And I also I did a tutorial for this hair as well, which is just this really soft, voluminous curls, which you could add any kind of wedding accessories to, like if you wanted to put like a really pretty like bridal kind of clip here, or you just wanted to pop your veil in the back. It's just a really simple classic style that would suit everyone. So I hope you guys enjoy today's tutorial and let's get into it. So I'm going to start out by just putting some heat protectant spray through my hair and then while that dries I can do my makeup and then it'll be ready for me to style my hair at the end. So I'm using the GHD Heat Protect Spray and my giant GHD petal brush just to disperse this through my hair evenly. So first I'm going to prime my skin. I'm using my L'Oreal Lumi Magique base. For foundation today I'm going to use my Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. I really like this because it is so full coverage but it doesn't feel that heavy. My only concern with it is it's not like the world's longest lasting foundation. So if you are getting your makeup done really early on your wedding day, um, like if you're having kind of a morning or early afternoon ceremony and it's right to the evening, you might want to pick something a little bit more long wearing. Um, but if you're having a late afternoon or evening wedding, then you could probably get away with this. Um, especially if you want to look flawless in photos, this will look amazing because it has no SPF and it's extremely full coverage and it's a matte finish so it just and it controls oil beautifully so it's perfect for brides. I'm going to buff that in with my EXO Beauty Round Face Brush and this is just going to give me a really nice flawless kind of finish to the skin. The great thing about this foundation though is they do make a huge range of shades. I think there's 22 shades in the line, so you're bound to find a shade that works well for you. And I'm just going to check some concealer on my under eyes. I'm using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Chantilly. And this is a really nice full coverage, long lasting concealer. I'm just using the same brush to buff that in as well. So I find this works really well for concealer. Now it is really important to set your face with powder as well, even if you don't really like having a matte complexion normally. I think in photography it always looks nicer to have a matte finish with like sort of very strategically placed highlights. Um, so even if you normally love a really glowy, dewy finish to the skin, I would definitely at least powder your T-zone um, just so that it looks nicer in photography. I'm going to use my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light, which is a super pale powder and it doesn't look... Um, super powdery as such on the skin. For some reason it's this miraculous kind of formula that kind of um, absorbs your natural oils but doesn't look powdery. It's a beautiful formula and I just use a really big brush to kind of pat that over my skin just so I don't disturb the makeup underneath. The Marc Jacobs foundation is fairly matte itself but I just feel like you get much more longevity out of it if you powder it and as I said before it looks really nice in photos. This powder is also the style of powder that doesn't create flashbacks, so you really want to avoid using an HD powder or something with silica in it, because otherwise you'll get that awful sort of white cast flashback. So choose something that's like a skin colour or normal translucent powder that isn't silica based. I also like to take a smaller brush, it's just a little Real Techniques brush, and just apply it really directly under my eye to set my under eye concealer. Now you want to apply a light bit of contouring, you don't want to go anything too heavy um, because you still want to look fairly natural like throughout the day um, on your wedding day but your photos it is nice to have a little bit of contouring just to define your face because as you can see once I put my um, face on it just made my face look extremely flat so I'm using my beloved Bobbi Brown Blonde Eyeshadow and this little brush from Fearless Cosmetics which is the perfect size and this is a lovely cool tone shade so it doesn't look muddy um, it's perfect for really pale skin tones and I'm just applying it right under my cheekbone. I keep it quite far back from my hairline to about halfway along my cheek. Like if I turn on the side, it's from my ear, like just above my ear on my hairline to like middle of the face. And this just creates a really natural looking shadow. If you use a bronzer, like a standard bronzer, even if it's a matte bronzer, it can look a little bit too warm. Um, unless you've got an extremely yellow warm skin tone, then I would recommend using a taupey colored like eyeshadow or contouring product. Um, rather than a bronzer, although everyone's skin's different. So if you're cool tone like me, I'd definitely recommend using a skin, like a nice sort of cool toned eyeshadow rather than a bronzer. 
I like to put a tiny bit, whatever's just left over on the brush, up around my temples as well. I don't really like going with extra product, otherwise it looks too much. Now I always like to apply a bronzer, I think it does warm up the complexion nicely. It's an optional step though, um, but if you do, I'd go for something matte, just so it looks nice in the photos. I'm using my Too Faced Milk Chocolate Sole Bronzer, which is my favourite. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know I pretty much only use this now. Um, but also something like Nars Laguna, it's got a tiny bit of shimmer, but it still looks fairly matte on the skin. It's a really nice one, or Benefit Hula. And what I kind of do is just blend out the contour with this and then bring the product up around my hairline and it just kind of shadows my face a little bit more. Just really helps to make my complexion look a little bit warmer. Now for my cheeks today, because I'm doing a very sort of fresh spring summer kind of bridal look, I'm going to use a lot of sort of soft pinks on the cheeks and lips and the eyes are going to be kind of nice mauve sort of tones, just very like feminine colours. So I thought I would use a cream blush by Illamasqua, this is the colour Promise. And this is a really beautiful, it looks quite like a bold barbie pink, but when it's put on the cheeks it is quite subtle. And I'm just going to dot that on kind of the apples of my cheeks and bring it back towards my hairline. I'm just going to apply a bit of a finishing powder, I'm using my Hourglass Ambient Lining Powder in Diffused Light. And my Fearless Cosmetics sort of dense um, buffing brush. I'm just going to buff this in over my face just to kind of blend the colours together a little bit more and it creates a really beautiful um, airbrushed finish to the skin so it looks so nice in photos. And I'm just going to kind of pat it over the cream blush. I don't want to rub it in too much and destroy the work we just did. Now for a highlight today I want to go with something quite natural um, but that really picks up well in photos and the best highlighter I found that does this is the Hourglass Ambient Strobing Powder in Incandescent Strobe Light. This is such a lovely, like, natural sheen sort of highlight. Like, it adds a nice sort of pearlescent glow to the skin, but it doesn't look shimmery or glittery. And I think that's something that's really important on your wedding day if you want to still look kinder, kinder, as natural as you can, sort of in person, but also in photography, have something that will really catch the light. And you just want to apply this to all the high points of your face. So I'm starting with my Cupid's Bow. It's my favourite area to highlight. <laughs> this particular powder is really a great colour for cool toned pale skin as well. It's got a slightly sort of pinky undertone. It's just really, really flattering. A little bit down my nose as well. And of course on top of the cheekbones. So this may not pick up too well on video, but in real life and in like actual photography, this highlight looks so beautiful. This looks so natural and just like you're, you know, actually glowing. But this, you'll notice I kept my forehead really matte and this part, I didn't bring the highlight in too close. Now for my brows, I'm just doing my normal routine. I'm using my e.l.f. brow kit in Ash and then putting a little bit of Bobbi Brown's Mahogany eyeshadow on the outer tail of the brow just to define it a little bit more. I'm also just going to set my brows with my Savvy Clear Brow Gel. We'll just keep all the hairs in place. Now for eyes today, I'm going to use a very bridal palette. This is the Naked 3 palette by Urban Decay. I haven't used this palette much actually, but recently I've been really enjoying these sort of soft pinks and mauvey sort of shades on my eyes. As you can see, this palette has such a nice selection of very sort of soft bridal colours, I like to say. So I'm going to start out with the colour Limit, which is a really soft kind of matte pinky shade and a fluffy brush and just apply this in my crease for a transition colour. Now I'm going to take the shade Nuna, which is a slightly deeper mauvey shade, and apply this on the outer third of the eye. So you can see I'm applying this into the crease on the outer third as well. It's running it over the lid. I'm just going to wet a flat eyeshadow brush with my Fix Plus and apply the shade Dust which is a shimmery soft pink all over the lid. And then you just want to go back in with the colour limit to blend that into the crease a bit. I'm just going to go back into the colour Nuna again to define the outer third a little bit more. Now I'm going to go in with my Hourglass um, strobing powder again and just apply this in the inner corner of my eyes. I'm just going to 
gonna go with the color limit and this smaller fluffy brush it's kind of like an oversized pencil brush and just apply it to my lower lash line So first I'm going to put on some mascara. I'm using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I'm going to do a couple of coats of that. And then I'm going to put on my false lashes. And these are very exciting. They're the I Spy by Danielle Mansudi Lashes in the style Smitten. Which are a gorgeous pair of very flirty um, lashes that have kind of quite a bit of length to the outer side. They'll give my eye kind of a nice shape. Um, but I also, I don't want to add winged liner or anything because I want this look to be all about the lashes. I'm just going to put some of my L'Oreal Waterproof False Lash Wings Mascara on my lower lashes. The reason I use waterproof on the bottom is because otherwise I end up with black kind of smudging under my eyes. So using a waterproof formula does help to stop that. And it's also good if you tend to cry a little bit if you get emotional, which you probably will on your wedding day. And for lips today I'm going to go in with my MAC lipstick in Angel and then a little bit of the L'Oreal Mega Shine Infallible Lip Gloss in Protest Queen on top. Now I'm moving on to hair. I'm just going to brush through my hair again just to ensure that there's no knots in there at all. I'm just going to separate off the top of my hair with a clip just so I can access the bottom part a little bit easier. Very attractive. <laughs> now basically what I'm going to do is just go through my hair with my GHD Platinum Straightener and curl my hair using these. So it's really easy to do. All you need to do is take a section of hair put the straightener through it and then begin twisting the tongs as you pull the hair down through the straightener. Then you end up with this lovely curl. Now I, that one I curled away from my face but this one I can curl towards my face. It's the same action but you just twist the straighteners the other way. And you just glide the hair. This sort of straightener is so easy to use for curls because it really, um, the hair glides through the straightener so well. Yeah, and there you go. There's the curl there. So I'm just going to go and do my whole head and then I'll get back to you. Now I'm just going through and I'm going to tease the roots of my hair just to give it a bit more volume with a small comb. And give it a wee spritz with hairspray in between as well. So this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did find it helpful, then please give this video a big thumbs up because it really does help me out. And if you're new here, then feel free to subscribe. I do make between six to seven videos a month, so I'd love to see you around here. And until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful few days and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.